Good morning all. What's inside a nano quadcopter? Well, let's take it apart and find out. But uh, just before I do that, I'm going to give it one last flight. But since quadcopters are so uncontrollable, I'm actually going to fly it inside this spaghetti jar. <sighs> Have you got a license for that thing? No, I haven't got a license because you don't need a license. Are you going to fly it over 400 feet? No, I'm not going to fly it over 400 millimetres because it's going to be stuck inside this spaghetti jar. I hope you're not going to fly it over my garden. Why is that then? Because it scares me dog. Right. No! Right, let's switch on the quadcopter and put it in the jar, facing away from me, of course, so that I can control it. Right. Here we go then. Oh yeah, that's much more manageable when it's stuck inside there. Huh. So let's start with the quadcopter. This is an intrude high speed, but uh, it's basically the same as a Chearson CX-10, I think it's called. Uh, you can see the LiPo in there. Can't see much else. I mean, there can't be much room for, for much else in there. The circuit board must be tiny. Uh, this white plastic thing is clipped over the prop guard here. You can see where it's come off there. So I think I'm going to need to do that, unclip that on all four corners. Otherwise, it's not going to come undone when I undo those screws. So let's do that now. Right, all four of those clips are undone. So when I undo this white plastic cover, it should uh, just come straight away. The biggest problem, I suppose, with doing this is having screwdrivers which are small enough to get onto the heads of these tiny screws because it's all pretty small scale stuff in here. Right, I think that's coming off. Uh, yep. There's the LiPo. How is that attached? Just soldered down onto the board. And then uh, the four motors are wired directly to the board as well. We can see most of what's on the board there. There's probably stuff on the other side as well, but let's get in close on that. Well, there's not a lot on this side, uh, just five transistors. Uh, so I presume the four corner transistors are driving the motors uh, in some sort of pulse width modulation type arrangement. Let's just switch that on. Uh, so you've got the white LED at the front to show where the front is, and then the green and blue LEDs. Uh, flash, I think, mainly to tell you that the battery's getting low while it's in flight. Okay, let's see if we can see the other side of this board. Right, I think in order to see the other side of the board, I'm going to have to take at least two of these props off, so I'm trying to wedge them off. Oh yeah, that's worked. And now what I've got to do is mark one of them with a dot or something. Uh, so that they go, actually, I think the B's probably go opposite each other. Yeah, B, opposite B, uh, that's A, opposite A, yes. Yeah. So if I just ease these off, just by sliding that under, and just comes up like a wedge. So those are off. Right, we can look at the board now. Right, the big chip uh, looks like it's an ST microcontroller. It's definitely ST and it's an F050K4, I think that is. So yeah, that I think would be an ST microcontroller. Now the antenna runs up to that top right hand corner. Does that give us a clue as to what the other chips are? I'm gonna have to move that wire anyway, so let's do that now. Right, the smallest chip looks like it's an XN297. I think that's what it is. And the crystal there, if I can get the light on it. Oh, 25 megahertz, I think that is. Yeah, 25 megahertz. Now what's this medium sized chip down here? Ah, okay, oh, is that, did I see Invensys on there? Let's try and get the light on it. Yes, that's an Invensys MPU something or other. 
can't quite see the number on there. Um, but they make the gyro and accelerometer chip, so that's almost certainly what that is, gyro and accelerometer. My guess then is that the little chip on the right is the radio receiver. I think that's probably what that is. So yeah, there's not a lot on there. Well, there wouldn't be, would there, because it's a tiny circuit board, but it does look like microcontroller, uh, gyros and accelerometers, and a radio receiver. Right, let's bend that wire back roughly where it was, tip that over and then these motors were pushed into these little pods so let's push those back in, yep they seem to be going in hopefully without breaking the wires and uh, it would be nice if this thing actually uh, flew again there's a marking there on the top of the board, uh, SJ-MT9913R2.4G, uh, uh, so 2.4 gigahertz uh, V1.2. Yeah, no reason why this shouldn't go back together. Just got to do those screws up and clip those clips over the prop guards. Hmm, something's not quite gone in there properly. Oh well, let's try this one. It's probably a trapped wire, but it's just going to have to stay trapped, I think, because I could do this a hundred times and not get a trapped wire untrapped, as it were. Okay, let's just do the fourth one. See if it flies. Right, prop B goes opposite prop B, prop A, opposite prop A, make sure they all turn. Okay, switch on, see if this bunny hops. Yeah, sort of does. <laughs> does seem a bit... Uh, out of alignment though. Well, that seems alright. Right, let's do the uh, remote control now. Take the batteries out first I suppose. These are uh, nickel metal hydrides of dubious origin. Okay, let's uh, undo that. Now, I'm hoping there'll be a bit more space inside here and things won't be quite as cramped as in the aircraft. That's what I'm hoping. Is that going to come apart? Hmm, not immediately. I think, oh yeah, I think I can see some clips in there. Okay, I'm going to have a go at unclipping it. Right, um, quite, there's no clips on here, but um, studs pushed into fairly tight receptacles. It took quite a bit of levering to get that off, but it came off without anything breaking, I think. Now, is that going to come out? What's stopping that coming out? I think it's just the switch. This thing pushed onto a switch on the board that was stopping that coming out. Aha! Uh -huh. Good. What do we have here? Well, not much on the top. So I think the most interesting thing here is this little radio uh, transmitter module. You can see the antenna wire is soldered onto it. And it says in there, Mozzie. So is this, uh, are those four pins SPI? Is it Mizo and Mozzie? Is it an SPI transmitter? Uh, possibly. There's a crystal on there as well, I think. Right, now the connections on there are Mozzie, master out, slave in. Now if that's a transmitter, uh, master must be the board, so master out, slave in. Um, IRQ, ground and VCC. The crystal is, well that's the top of it, that round thing there. Uh, that's focus camera. That's the back end of it with the two legs. So I don't know what frequency that would be. 
for a 2.4 gig transmitter. I've no idea. Uh, other stuff on here, LED, diode, buzzer, lots of switches, two uh, joysticks with pots. There's a little inductor there. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. And three volts comes up here from the battery box. Let's look at the chips on the underside. So this is where the transmitter module pokes through. We have an unmarked microcontroller here. I can't see any markings on it. Doesn't really matter what it is. Probably another ST. And there's a 24LC02, uh, which I believe is a serial memory chip there. Why would that be there? Because most microcontrollers have uh, program memory in them, so it can't be for program. It must be for parameters of some sort, but I can't imagine why they'd need an external memory. Microcontrollers generally have flash and E squared prom and everything you'd need inside. Not really sure what that's for. Yeah, it's a two wire serial E squared prom. Now I presume the 24C02 is the 2K1, 256 by 8, uh, so 256 bytes. Uh, all this stuff, but this is quite comforting. Look, data retention, 100 years. Well, that's all right then. That gives me at least 95 years to put this back together again, which I should be able to manage. Let's try and get this thing on. Right, put that over there. And just press. Oh yeah, that seemed to go well. I hope I haven't left anything out. No, don't think so. I think that switch goes on afterwards. Mm, that looks ambidextrous, so let's put it on there. Yeah, I think that's good. Just put the screws in and we're good to go. Right, batteries back in, cover on, and uh, Let's see if it flies. Right. Perfect. No problem at all. Just rotate it. Don't have to bother with that, do I? Because it can't go anywhere. So that's what's inside a nano quad. Oh, heck.